Hello there guys and welcome to Mad Doc Minis and welcome to the next instalment of the Titan build. So in this opening footage I'm drilling holes in each of the corners underneath the plinth that holds the cathedral and I'm doing that because I want to make these turret sections on the corners look a little bit better and I want them to be removable these things that I'm going to put on so I'm going to magnetize them. I drill a hole and get corresponding size magnets and uh, glue those into the holes and I'm basically going to put a component underneath just to make the whole turret section look a little bit more I don't know realistic really I want to magnetize them because I want to be able to take these off if I want to sit that whole cathedral section flat down on a table as a separate terrain piece hence why all the uh, magnets which is not something I would normally um, bother with actually so you can see here I've set a piece of wood into this lego component and I'm going to magnetize that straight onto the bottom there in all four corners and uh, I do make a note of which goes where because as ever with big bills like this there are imperfections and uh, you want to know what's gone where. So I use some uh, funky foam this is kind of EVA type foam stuff just to kind of fill in gaps around the turrets. It's a fantastic crafting material super glues together really well and takes some um, spray paint. I've put some skulls on the cathedral in various locations these are just 3d printed things off of Etsy and I've got these leftover parts from an older 40k terrain set. Um, I got these on a job lot off of eBay. Um, and I decide to use those on parts of the cathedral. I've only got a few of them, so it's not like I'm kind of covering the thing in, in detail that isn't my own, but I think they can supplement it nicely. So first of all, in order to do that, I've got to trim them down and tidy them up quite significantly. They've been glued together with, uh, with uh, polystyrene cement uh, or the, you know the plastic cement stuff, which means that they're a bit of a mess. One of the reasons that I don't like uh, plastic cement, actually, I prefer super glue, but I go ahead and saw off uh, some of the bits and pieces there, tidy up the glue and flatten them on the underside by clipping bits of detail that are kind of sitting proud away and that will allow me to glue them onto the structure of the cathedral um, much you know much nicer much kind of more flush uh, without any problems and there's there's quite a little bit of detail on the underside it's a shame to lose this but I'm never going to see it so it's it's not a major problem really and a hobby snips and a sharp knife do most of the most of the hard work there and uh, and I actually have to give that a really decent file down afterwards as well, just to kind of smooth it all off. Um, yeah, the plastic cement really creates a mess. It holds things together amazingly well. But if you ever want to take anything apart, my word, you know, <laughs> certainly does what it says on the tin, you know. So here you can see that that will sit nice and flush now on uh, on a you know a flat piece of uh, material, which is exactly what I wanted. So that's them after they've all been tidied up and those are all the kind of bits that came off and uh, and I use those later in the build on various parts and here I'm just putting a little uh, plinth above the doorway at the, at the side of the cathedral and sitting on one of those uh, terrain pieces above it and I just think that adds a nice little bit of detail into the cathedral that I otherwise couldn't achieve. I'm not about to do lots of 3D printing. I think for me on this build that wouldn't be appropriate so I just kind of avoided that and I want it to be a, a scratch build if that makes sense. So I'm using some plastic straws here to add in some architectural detail and just block that in. Little bits of Lego, these cylinders, I just glue those into the four corners around the uh, the top of the towers here where those little kind of pillars overhang, do you see what I mean? Um, just to kind of block them in a little bit because it was looking a bit weird with them overhanging. And I use these Lego components which are kind of like little vents or grills and I just add a little bit of detail on the uh, on the kind of side on the pillars of the cathedral. I glue uh, five of those together using a ruler to line them up nice and straight and then put them on. You'll see that later. I use these two, um, well, I guess they're kind of auto cannon turrets from the Imperial Knight kit. And uh, I decide to kind of uh, make a turret section that goes underneath those to go on top of each tower. And I, in, well, I actually had a rare moment of foresight where I actually put a magnet underneath that roof of the tower. And that allows me to magnetize these and remove them or replace them in the future if I wish. I'm not so good at that kind of forward thinking, but I did do it here. Although I didn't show that in the last video, there is indeed a magnet glued underneath the roof. So I uh, glue a corresponding magnet into these Lego power miners bits that's the bits I just use under the under the corners of the plinth same uh, same piece from Lego and I just make sure I line the magnet up properly and that allows me to kind of then magnetize uh, those turret sections on top of the towers and I just kind of glue the uh, the autocannon turret itself onto the top of 
these uh, two Lego components, one big power miners wheel and a smaller kind of retro space wheel on there. And they'll rotate round either at the magnet or at the wheel section. So that's great. And they're easily to remove as well for sto you know for storage or transport. Those bits are likely to break off. So it's a nicer feature to be able to remove them like that. So happy days. And I think they're perfectly situated for anti-aircraft defence. They're the highest point on the Titan. There's two of them. They're going to mash any aircraft coming in to attack, I think. I used this uh, chocolate box lid initially as a landing pad. And uh, this is kind of the initial mock-up I did for it. But I soon realised that I need to modify that and make it bigger to accommodate 40k aircraft. So stay tuned for that. I used some more terrain bits on the back of the build here. And this Lego strut just to kind of give a bit of support to the overhanging landing pad there. I know it looks a little bit jerry-rigged, but I don't care. I then make the landing pad bigger, as I said before, using a good bit of foam board there and some EVA foam around the outside. And then I decide to make these walkways that kind of go from the landing pad into the top of the towers. I think that would divide opinion, but I kind of like the idea of this kind of multi-layered thing. You know, the rear part of the cathedral is more functional. It's a landing pad. Well, on the facade at the front there, I used some pieces um, from the, um, the the new version of Adeptus Titanicus. I can't remember. What, is that what it's called still? I can't remember, but they're kind of, you know, movement pieces from that that I chopped up. Stained glass windows were done a drawing kind of a onto tin foil uh, and using Sharpie markers in various colours and then I kind of glued those underneath the window frames. Um, I could have printed something out, I could have probably bought something really really nice off of Etsy but I decided that for me personally that would have been a bit of a cheat. I really wanted to try and build most of this thing myself from scratch and um, I just think buying 3D printed stained glass windows is a little bit like yeah. It, it wouldn't have sat well with me, if you know what I mean. So a bit of glue around the periphery there, super glue, and then very carefully placing the window frame over the top. And I'm kind of revising the side windows on the cathedral in case you haven't worked that out. I'm making them a bit more substantial. So uh, there's going to be detail that's going to be covered up by these new windows. And uh, in fact, you can see it in the next footage here, you can see these are the original windows on the side. And I realise I've got a bit of clear space on the side of the tower there, which I fill in with a vent. And I make a little bit more detail work across the top here using these little um, little kind of letter pieces that I got from a, a pound shop. <laughs> they're just, if you turn them over, they're perfect little oblongs. And um, you can see here that I've put the windows on and that's covered up most of the detail, but we have got some funny little gaps, which I'm going to fill in using these thin plastic drinking straws just to add architectural detail and to hide any sins from that previous phase, really. And they work really well once they're all painted up. Next up, I uh, reattach these um, these supports on the side, these flying buttresses. And, uh, and I put a little bit of a plinth at the bottom of the front stained glass windows. I lost the footage of how I did those windows, guys. But basically, a lot of hard work and drawing and the same technique as I used for the side ones, basically. And here you can see the kind of completed cathedral. It's, it's been primed. It's not been painted properly at this stage. But it gives you an idea of how that is shaping up. And I am also going to show you how that looks on top of the entire Titan um, as well. And uh, my wife was very understanding in me bringing this ridiculous thing into the kitchen to do some filming. So uh, maybe a, a bit of a shout out to Mrs. Mad Doc there <laughs> uh, is required. But um, but you can see here I've got the, the White Dwarf magazine there that was the inspiration for this build at the bottom. And that gives a sense of scale as well. Starting to shape up quite nicely, I think. It's all primed. It will need a little bit more priming when the summer comes in finally in the UK. It's, it's been raining for about five months solid over here in case anyone in the US is wondering why it's taken me so long to get anything done on this thing if I need to do anything outside it's kind of scuppered you know but um but yeah the the kind of rear here you can see it's a little bit more functional from the rear a lot of detail on the rear side of the titan as you've seen before I've actually got a sense of scale for you next here with the Redemptor Dreadnought and a Primara Space Marine. When we start zooming out, you can really appreciate the enormous size of this thing. It genuinely is huge, and I'm really happy with that. This is the, the minimum size for me, in my mind, of this thing in universe. I would have gone much bigger if I could have done, but this was as large as I could realistically go. Uh, the landing pad will support a Storm Raven or actually an Imperial Guard Valkyrie, which I think is important. I'm really pleased that I followed through and enlarged the landing pad to enable that to happen. That's uh, that's actually quite important to me. You can see my little doggy, my little puppy, Jeb, in the background there, having a whale of a time with one of his chew treats. He's, he's enjoying the process too, it would seem. 
So thanks ever so much for joining me, guys. And uh, I really, really do appreciate all the support. This is the original White Dwarf, which inspired the build. I'll leave you with some shots of that. And uh, if you've enjoyed the content, please like and share. It really does help. And if you're not already subscribed, consider giving me a sub. Thanks ever so much, guys. Cheers.